What up guys, welcome back to another video. Jason hanging out with you and I'm gonna be doing a pickups video, which is really cool. I kind of have a nice assortment of things today uh, from some Nerf guns, plug and plays, PC, Dreamcast, Game Boy, a bunch of cool stuff. But first, of course, I've got my favorite PGL rings. You guys remember these back in the day? What am I talking about? I'm still having them today. Mmm. They're the best when they're soft though. You gotta get them fresh. Love it. They make them in um, sour apple too, which are really good. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right into the pickups video. So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna start with this Nerf gun here. This is really cool. Um, I picked this up at the AZ Collectors Marketplace here locally. Uh, my good friend Neil hooked me up with this. This is a, it's basically a Recon CS6 look-alike, but it's called a Deploy. And uh, it didn't come complete. It's missing the clip and a bunch of other stuff, but it's still a really, really cool uh, Nerf blaster. So check this out, when you hold it like this, got the handle, then you hit this little button up top, the gun actually deploys and becomes um, the blaster, which is really cool. It's got this de-jamming mechanism up here. Um, it's basically like a shotgun pump and single shot. Um, you put the clip right in the side here, which is really nice. And a cool thing it has, although it's, it's kind of useless, but it's still cool to have, it does have like a little laser LED sight on it. My favorite thing about it, I think, is that it looks like the Stormtrooper blaster from Star Wars, and I, I love that. When you put the clip in the side, it looks just like it. If you play Dark Forces, you know, you run around with um, the blaster, it looks really cool. Moving right along, found this out there in the wild. This is from PvP, actually, and this is for the Wii, and you, you just basically put the controller in it sideways like this, and then it becomes almost like, uh, it looks like a Super Nintendo controller but it's just one and two. It's got your star, your D-pad up there, and it basically simulates an NES controller. And of course, having the round sides like that, it is so comfortable. This is really cool. It's called Boss. Big Oversized Super Cell is the name of it. But uh, if you play a lot of side scrollers or anything like that where it requires you to hold the uh, Wii Remote sideways, this is actually a really, really cool um, accessory for you there. Big shout out to my friend John Riggs here. This is excellent. I, I've been meaning to talk about this. He sent me a copy of this. He sent a lot of people a copy of this. Um, this is the Barnacles Nerdgasm NES game, which is really cool. It has a whole bunch of really cool people on there. Uh, Metal Jesus, Barnacles, the, the list goes on of people. But he basically ROM hacked this game. This is the original Mario Brothers, um, or Super Mario Brothers rather. And he hacked the this game and put all of us inside the game, which is really cool. Um, I am honored to be featured in there as well. Uh, I believe I'm, you can't really see from this distance, but I'll zoom up, I'm right there. I'm the little dude that runs around in the water, which is really cool. So, John, you're awesome, I appreciate this. Thanks for the, uh, the inclusion there on this game, very cool. This is the Barnacles Nerdgasm Nintendo game. Moving right along here, this is Mojo. This is, uh, and I, I found this out there, it was a dollar at Bookman, so we couldn't pass it up. It looked really cool. It looks almost like a, a marble type puzzle game. Uh, big fan of Marble Madness on NES, played that a ton back in the day. So something like this um, is kind of right up my alley. I like it a lot, and for a dollar, complete. I mean, you can't really pass stuff up like that. Very cool. Another thing you can't pass up, when I see this out in the wild, this is the original Flat Out by Bugbear on PC. This is really neat because it, I mean, physical copy, uh, never played, this disc is immaculate, and it's hard It's hard to see that stuff on the shelf. You know, when you see it there, you gotta, you gotta get it. You can't pass that up. Steph found, finally, she was online and I, she saw some sort of ad, or somewhere had it, Amazon had it, one of the two, and this is something we were looking for for a while, so this is really cool that now that we have this, we can play four player Smash Brothers with GameCube controllers, which is really cool. Um, so really neat that she found that. And you know what, you know, that's the only one thing I'm gonna say is, you know, Nintendo, you glue your boxes down like that, and there is really like no physical way to open these boxes without doing this. And it really, it just drives me up the wall. Like, not that I'm really concerned about box collecting for Wii U, but I mean, down the road, I mean, maybe, you know, but I mean, you, you have to either get an X-Acto knife and cut and somehow make it so that you only cut the sides and so the lip comes up, but it's glued. And I hate that. They've been doing that since the Wii on some of their products. and. I just don't like it, you have to terrorize your box to get it open. Wish you didn't have to do that. Anarchy Reigns here, found that out in the wild. This is for PS3, and this is, uh, uh, honestly, I don't know what this is. It looks like a fighting game. Uh, it almost, it was done by Sega. 
but it looks like some sort of uh, almost Street Fighter-like fighting game on the back. So I haven't played it, I'm not sure what it's about, but we found it out there in the wild, super cheap, so can't pass that up. Also found a couple of PS Vita games, which is really cool. Uh, one factory sealed, actually. This is Spy Hunter factory sealed, which is really neat. I uh, found that for $3. We can't beat that. I uh, found this here. This is, the, oh, Ninja Gaiden 2. Yeah, very cool. Didn't come complete, unfortunately, but I think it was a few bucks out there. So, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Very, very cool game there by uh, Tecmo. More PC stuff here. Found the next Tetris by Atari. Um, there's quite a few Tetris games that I'm finding that they made. Of course, Tetris being a, a huge franchise, everyone loves Tetris, everyone knows Tetris. But um, they made like Next Tetris and Generations Tetris, and I, honestly, it I, I can't even remember all the, the Tetris games that are, are out there. But every time I go out hunting, I always come across the Tetris game. This is the Toy Story 2 action game. This is the Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue game, which is, which is cool. It's like a third person, um, Buzz Lightyear type adventure shooting type game. Um, there's kind of a cult following with this too that I found after researching and trying to get it to run um, on the PC, which I did get it to run by the way. It's kind of a cool game. It's neat to play, you know, Buzz Lightyear and run around in a third person. I mean, it's kind of neat. This is Bounty Hunter. Honestly, I never heard of this game, but it looks almost like a, uh, a Jump Raven, if any of you really old school players remember that game. Remember in the 90s when they were thinking of the future and it was always like really tall buildings with no bottoms and flying cars everywhere? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking this game looks like, but you kind of get around in these vehicles and run around. Uh, Take Two Interactive did it, so I mean, who knows? It could be cool. It was a few bucks, so why not give it a shot? Of course, Soldier of Fortune. This is the gold edition. Uh, ha I already have a copy of this, but this was a really neat one to find out there in the wild. Um, still very much supported by the community. Uh, they have community packs, community patches. Uh, there's whole games that you can download where they're high-res textures. I mean, there's a huge following with Soldier of Fortune. This game here, uh, and I, be I believe I've even talked about a Soldier of Fortune on a few other pickup videos that I found. Um, but what's really cool about this is I remember we built a PC specifically to play this game back in the 90s. Well, when did this come out here? It, yeah, it would have been 99 or 2000. So very, very cool. I remember that fondly. Very brutal game right there. Raised a lot of eyebrows. And this was a really cool, probably the coolest find in the PC section um, that I think is Mortal Kombat 3. This is the PC port. It was ported over by GT. Uh, interactive, which is really, really neat. The disc is in great shape, like it's never even been played, but I, I'm very, very happy to have found this. I've never seen this out in the wild before. So, um, you know, you had your you had your DOS ports and this and that, but this is actually the Windows, pretty much like Windows 98 uh, version of it, which is really cool. So, love that. Only found one PS game out there, but good old fashioned Laura Croft here. She is back in Tomb Raider 2. And I just love this, you know, if you look at the back of it, I mean, come on, you know, they were really pushing the boundaries of the whole sex sells thing. I mean, you can see they got her standing there in a bikini with a gun. I mean, you know, they're really doing that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just good old fashioned classic Tomb Raider. And usually when you see this game, um, you don't always find it with the black label. Sometimes it's like the greatest hits. You see a lot of uh, Tomb Raider because it sold a lot, but it was really cool to find this. Um, in the original Black Label there. A couple of Dreamcast games here. Revolt, we all know and love Revolt. Uh, you know, couldn't pass it up. Good old fashioned RC car racing by acclaim, love that. Um, Space Channel 5, you, you probably saw me pick this up in a thrifting video, which is really cool. I think I briefly talked about it, but I want to throw it in there too. Just, you know, I haven't played it yet, but uh, when I did talk about it in there, everyone was like, oh my gosh, Space Channel 5, Space Channel 5. So. I'm gonna check it out. I think it's a music game. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, got a couple of plug and plays here. We got some Power Rangers. I've I have actually come across this a few times in the wild. However, um, every time I do, uh, <laughs> his head is broken off. Oh my gosh, the horror! So this one, although is dirty and not in the best shape, it it was still you know a buck ninety nine, and you know you can't pass stuff up when it's when it's that cheap and it just needs a good cleaning. And it's all intact and appears to be working just fine, so um, that's really cool. I don't know if this is like a side scroller or a shooter or a beat em up or what, but uh, very cool Power Rangers Jack specific plug and play right there. I got a Konami plug and play the other day, which is really neat. This is the 
uh, Konami, what do they call it specifically? Konami Collector Series Arcade Advanced. Um, but it has like Frogger and a bunch of other kind of Konami shooters on there. It's a neat little game. I think it's got like six games on there. Found a few Game Boy games out there. I left them here in the package just to show you guys. So they were $4 a piece, but they came complete with the manual and the dust cover. So this is this is really neat. This is Home Alone. And uh, Stephanie found this. She wanted to pick this up. I've never played it on Game Boy, so I'm not sure how good or not good it is. But THQ did it. And I just love it because I wanted to show this because it has the old THQ logo. And a pop quiz, everyone. What does THQ stand for? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, time's up. Stands for Toy Headquarters, which is really cool. I, a lot of people don't know that. So it used to say that right on it, of course, but um, they changed that. THQ, I don't remember what year they changed it. It had to have been late 90s. They changed their logo and everything, and they got rid of that Toy Headquarters. So a little pop quiz trivia there. Um, and this is another game she found. Of course, I wanted it. Why would I not? Um, Dead Heat Scramble. You can see that there. This is done by, what, Electro Brain, which is neat. I've never played this game, but what I like about it is, if you can see inside here, it has a picture of a truck on the front, and that says Nissan on it. So that's like, a, it's an old Nissan pickup. And I like anything that uses, especially back in the day, any game that uses kind of like licensed cars or licensed branding. I always find that, I mean, it's, it's definitely hit or miss, and especially being on Game Boy. But to have Nissan, you know, have, having Nissan allowing them to use their brand in the game um, says something. So that's pretty cool, and I wanted to collect that. Complete there, four dollars. I think it's totally reasonable, and and uh, definitely right on the money for the value of it. Um, found a couple of uh, 360 games at first. Found the soundtrack, Street Fighter, the movie soundtrack. Isn't that cool? Look at that. How neat. You know, this was back in the day when they were like, look, we need you guys to compose some music uh, for the movie, but it's going to be not really for the movie. It's going to be on the soundtrack, and we're going to throw some background music in in the movie throughout. But uh, this is basically almost like gangster rap, hip-hop gangster rap stuff. Um, Ice Cube, Nas, Farside, Paris, uh, LL Cool J, Craig Mack, MC Hammer, Public Enemy, Another Level. Wow. Um, when I saw all those, I just had to get it, and and honestly, it's uh, it's interesting. It's it's very aggressive. There's no parental advisory sticker on it, which is I find interesting because there's cussing throughout. Um, usually they do that, but uh, the movie was rated R, which was it? I don't see that anywhere on here. Anyway, 1994, very very cool. Some 360 games here. Got Forza Motorsport 3 Ultimate Collection, which is really neat. Everyone's been playing Horizon 2 on Xbox One and all that. And uh, I don't have an Xbox One, so I've been kind of getting back into the Forza whole scene here. So I found it, found a few of them out there, which is really cool. So this is uh, three Ultimate Collection, very cool. Forza Two Motors Motorsport, which is a great, great game, classic game. And see on the back, I got it for two dollars. Wow, I mean, two bucks. Come on, complete, very nice. And then lastly, uh, the Project Gotham Racing, what is this, three? Yeah, three. Box is a little faded, it's kind of in rough shape, but it was one dollar, folks. One dollar, I'd buy that for a dollar. Uh, found some strategy guys, which is really neat. Stephanie found this, seventh guest. This is the strategy guide for that. It is like a Bible, uh, it's amazing. Uh, in really good shape, this is cool. It doesn't have any, really any creases here. It's in pretty good shape, so. Um, yeah, fantastic game. You know, if there's a if there's a game out there that you need a strategy guide for, it's this. <laughs> uh, 11th Hour, 7th Guest, Mist, all that sort of thing. Very cool that she found that there. Now she's got a complete in-box game, complete, and with the matching strategy guide. So that's really cool. The original Left 4 Dead strategy guide, which is cool, she found. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2 she has, which of course we're very partial to. It was one of the first games that we played together. Very cool. Very romantic. And uh, this she found the original Left 4 Dead, so now she has the complete Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 strategy guys. I found this. This was an insta buy for me. This is very, very cool. I cannot wait to sit down when I have some time and read through this and go through it. This is the Driving Games Manual, and this was actually done by Haynes. And if you know, Haynes are, these guys are the ones that put together uh, car manuals and repair manuals for, I mean, they have for, I don't know, what, 
50 years, I don't know, 40 years, something. They've been around a long time and they release uh, manuals and books to help you repair your car, how to disassemble, reassemble, how to repair, troubleshooting. It's amazing, but they went through and they made a games manual, which is basically the ultimate guide to all car-based computer and video games. Wow, it's so cool. Like if you just open this up, and you start to look at some of this stuff. I mean, I just opened it up here. Here's Night Driver, one of my favorite games uh, on the Atari, but there's also the arcade of it. You can just start going through this stuff and looking. Here's Outrun, Super Sprints. Like, look at this stuff. It's amazing. Amazing. Talks about all these different games. Oh, it's so cool. Then in the very back, it has this like chronological year, like timeline of all these games. Oh, it's so cool. So I cannot, I cannot wait to sit down and dive into this game. This is like right up my alley. It's like the perfect, perfect thing for me. So I'm really cool to have that. Never even knew that existed, but awesome stuff there. And lastly, I want to talk about this. We came across these. Now I'm gonna need a little help here from you guys. If you know anything about these, please in the comments let me know or send me a message, let me know what's up because I'm, I'm having trouble getting these to work. I don't know if they're bootleg or not. I feel like they are. But anyway, I came across these in the savers. This is, they're the Sega Ages 2500 it says and it says it's a DVD game, okay? And they came in these little sleeves. They must have been in a, a folder or binder or something. But they have the the, the cover, which which looks legit. I mean, it, it does. I mean, it's not in a case. I can put them in like DVD cases and it'll probably be just fine. And then you have the discs itself. And the disc, it's not like a, a ripped, burnt copy. It's a real disc. So I'm leaning to believe that they're real, but I can't get them to play in anything. It says a DVD game. So I've tried them in the DVD player. They don't work. Put them in the computer. They don't work. I put them in PlayStation. I put them in everything just to see if they maybe play. I put them in a Japanese PlayStation 2. Some people say they work in the PS2 DVD. I've tried that, I cannot get them to work, but these are really neat and it's a DVD game. So I'm thinking that you play it with a DVD remote or something or rather, I don't know. But I saw these out there, I had to buy them. So I just got all of them that they had there at Saber. So let me just quickly go through what, what I found there. So Golden Axe. SLAI, which is uh, Steel Lancer Arena, uh, Arena, Arena International, which looks almost like a uh, like a bot kind of uh, combat game. Tomb Raider, original Tomb Raider, Dynasty Warriors 4, Zone of Vendors, I Ninja, Gladiator, RTX, Red Rock. Very cool, Shinobi. Some good old fighting guilty gear right there. And Lethal Skies 2. Any help with that, I would appreciate because I can't get these to work on anything. And I really would like to. I think that's a really unique collectible thing here because they look real. I don't know, help me out. All right guys, well, I really hope you've enjoyed the pickups video. Did I miss anything? I think we're all good there. I just wanted to put together something to show you guys some cool and fun, unique things. So. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to subscribe and like and post and share the video. Uh, HeineHouseEntertainment.com is my website. Emulator Review on Facebook, at the EMU Review on Twitter, Jason.Heine on Instagram. Oh my gosh, what else is there? So, so much. Thanks for hanging out, you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Peachios. Mmm. It's like eating a real peach, but fake.